Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. Hey, passengers. It's Dan from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I just wanted to let you know that this episode is being brought to you by Dream Creators Travel. Our good friends Jennifer G. and Julissa are two of the most knowledgeable people I know when it comes to booking trips to Walt Disney World. Follow them for more Disney tips and tricks on their Facebook group called Busy Moms Planning Disney. Our listeners will not only receive the best booking incentives available, but you will also qualify for a very special promotion. If you book a Disney or Universal package, including room and tickets for three nights or more, they're going to go ahead and give you a free $25 Disney gift card. Be sure to let them know your favorite tour guides at the Grand Circle Tour podcast sent you so that you ensure you receive your free gift. Visit the Dream Creators Travel website today at dreamcreatorstravel.com and remember their slogan, if you can dream it, we can create it. Aloha, good morning. I'm starting I'm starting from this point. The last like two minutes, I'm, I'm not going to subject the passengers to. I'm going to be cool like that. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I had my coffee. I'm good. Hey, passengers. Uh, Skipper Jay here. I'm with George and his lovely wife, Jess. And you'll notice Holly's not here today, and that is because she is on a Monte Cristo timeout. She's she's having a Disney hangover. No, 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 no. We're not gonna we're not gonna tell the truth. We're gonna tell everyone. It's because she went to Disneyland for the third time and still hasn't got a Monte Cristo. So she's a bad girl. She has to sit today out. I'm sorry, Jay. That's something I will probably never put in my mouth. <laughs> it is the single greatest food item in Disney history. There is, and I don't care that it's twenty nine ninety nine now. Is that, what, is that what the price is now? 30 bucks for a Monte Cristo now. Thirty dollars for a sandwich with ham cheese and no, no, the world's most delicious. I'll never eat the world's most deliciousness sandwich of all time. The greatest, um, the single great. I mean, there's no sandwich in the history of sandwiches that can top the Disneyland Monte Cristo. I can it, think of it is my crack, and I have to get my fix every time I go to Disneyland. I, it's so good, Jess. I don't care that it's 30 bucks for a sandwich with some palm frites because it comes with the palm frites now. What the palm frites? Fancy fries. Oh, okay. Fancy fries. And it comes with the anglaise sauce. So, I mean, I don't even have to ask for it anymore. You know what? I, I, it, I may get two. I may stuff myself. Nom, 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 nom. I may Homer Simpson that. You know when he goes to hell, the devil's like feeding him donuts? More, more, more. That'll be me. I think as far as the I'll have, I'll have my two plates, and then I'll look around and be like, are you going to finish that? Yeah. See, I'm sorry, Jason. I have seen pictures of it, and it makes me gag every time. But you also have to take into consideration this is a person that has to eat a over easy egg you know in what? one bite. Close your eyes and just focus on the flavor, the the olfactory senses as you as you smell what you take. Oh, the, she deliciousness. The she has the poor mm-hmm. Remy. Oh, but you gotta dip it in the sauce. Just mmm. Mm. I say the Monte Cristo Candid. and the, no. the Plaza Chicken are the state. Oh, dude, the Plaza Chicken. And just like there's no greater sandwich in the world than the Disneyland Monte Cristo, there is no greater fried chicken on planet Earth than the Plaza Inn fried chicken. And if Mindy hears this, she's going to punch the air and we'll hear the screaming because she, she agrees with me on this. Mm-hmm. I'd rather lick my the, pl- the The Plaza Chicken is... Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I could live on those two items to, alone. She may be able to do one out of the two. Yeah, I can definitely do one out of the two. I can't. Just, just close your eyes and focus on all the savory deliciousness. Sweetheart, I can't even have my food touching. There is no greater 
sandwich on earth than the Disneyland Monte Cristo. It's a hill I'm willing to die on. If so good, I can't eat Monte Cristos anywhere else. It has ruined all other Monte Cristos for me worldwide. Yeah, for a lot of the, the types of food, it, it tastes much better in at Disney. Like, even if they were to say, you make a Dole Whip at home, it's pineapple juice and soft serve ice cream. It's... The Monte Cristo for me is our version of the Eclair. You know what? It, it, it is true. The Monte Cristo is, and the fried chicken belong to Disneyland, but so does popcorn. There is no greater popcorn in the world than Disneyland popcorn. And can and, I just settle for fried chicken or waffles? No. And uh, Disneyland churros are way better than Disney World. Oh, we 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 have discussed this a million times. And I, if passengers, if you're new, the Disneyland churros are for locals, and the Disney World churros are for tourists. Where is Mindy when we need her? Because she would be all over this. Well, no, it's it's to the fact of because when we were done there at Walt Disney World, uh, Mindy, Mindy bought us the churros, mm -hmm. and I'm no no. And how was that? How was that brick? How was that cinnamon was so, flavored brick? I was so glad in a sense that she bought it and I didn't because I'm the type of frugal person that if I don't get my money's worth, I would have literally turned back around, went to the cart, threw it off right in front of them and said, I would like my money back, please. Okay, I don't think, okay, you know what? I, I, as a former cast member, I have had to deal with protein spills. Not cool, dude, not cool. Yeah. Don't, don't make, don't make someone toss their cookies because you don't like what, no, don't, bad, bad, shame. Get, Jazz, get a newspaper, roll it up and smack him for me. <laughs> Okay, tickle fight. Oh my God, you too. You too. It's like hanging out with your, I don't know, younger brother and sister on a Saturday morning. Like there's no cartoons, so I have to entertain them. We're easily entertained. We're very easily entertained. It's okay, so am I. <laughs> you can entertain me with bubble wrap. You know, my mind goes right to Doctor Who and we're not going to go there. Because I could just make this whole episode about Doctor Who. So, um, hey, what are you guys watching? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What's new? Uh, what, what, what is what is tickling your your your? What, what, what is? Uh, I have a good saying. So, sorry, everyone. What's tickling our fancy? Yeah. Big Finish does what, uh, what's tingling your molecules, and I don't want to steal someone else's stuff. Uh, well, we just got done watching a TV series on, what was it, Hulu? It was called, Netflix. Netflix. or Netflix. It was called Strong, and it's kind of like The Biggest Loser meets Iron Man big brother big brother type of thing and uh it's a fitness but unlike the biggest loser this is actually tailored to their specific needs okay i'm glad you described what it was because i was hearing words and none of them were making sense i was like it's, i know these were i know so these words but the winners won three hundred thousand dollars you get me on that show. <laughs> get me on that show. It was a show, I guess, that came out in 2016, but yeah. for whatever reason, they only had one season. Mm. They need yeah. to have more. Yeah, TV, TV's a fickle thing. It's one of those shows that we were binge watching, and it was really cool. Really cool. But I'm also surprised, too, speaking on uh, what Disney Plus has announced, because there's a lot of stuff that's coming out either through the Premier Access or just through theaters and Premier Access. Oh, oh don't better. worry. We're going to talk about Cruella. Yeah. I can't wait to talk about Cruella. I'm hesitant. 
to watch that movie. Okay, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're oh, gonna, oh, put a pin in it. We're gonna get there. Cause I'm so excited for this movie, but we'll get there. Um, any, any, any other new, uh, entertainment you're binging on or any of that new stuff? Um, I'm trying to think as far as, I don't know. We're just pretty, I mean, well, for uh, me anyways, I'm going just on Disney plus yeah. and just putting on yeah. random stuff. I do right that. now we're watching the Mighty Duck series. Oh yeah. That's right. The, the game changers. Yeah, I've heard it's good because they don't uh, it, like it's like Cobra Kai. They don't try to retell the old story. It's something new. Yeah, yeah it's a continuation of like with a new generation, sort of like an underdog story. Yeah, but now the Mighty Ducks are the bad guys. Yes. Yeah, which is weird. It's cool. Yeah, it's, it's I really like plot twists like that. I like I like stories that aren't so predictable yeah I, I like it when they take something and they make it new and it's not just a recycled because the uniforms have completely changed too they don't have the original i would, I would hope so it's been 20 years yeah and those old uniforms would stink <laughs> which i think is so funny that the movie actually inspired to actually create a real live hockey team of the anaheim mighty ducks you know, the first time I ever heard of the Mighty Ducks, it was um, going to the Disneyland toll booth, and they would give you your map and your parking thing, and inside would be what's what's new. And there was the logo of the Mighty Ducks, and I was excited. I thought we were getting a new Donald Duck thing. When I, I found that it was hockey, I was like, oh, man, it's just hockey. <laughs> I thought we were getting a new DuckTales. You would have loved the land uh, in the parks of Duckburg. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I like Toontown. I, I, Duckburg would have to be done on that kind of scale. I, I need, I need a ride. In, I need a ride Duckburg. inside Scrooge's money bin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys what I am reading this week. I have finally done it. I have cracked open the very first Harry Potter book, uh, The Sorcerer's Stone, and I'm doing it. I'm reading all seven books, and I'm doing it in a row. So this time next week, I should be on book two. Sweetheart, I have read those uh, for the first time when I was in, like, sixth grade. I've never done it, and uh, the adventure is brand new for me. Don't don't shame me. Don't Don't shame my reading choices. <laughs> right, right before this, I re 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 read uh, Myth of Sisyphus. So, you know, I, I'm getting to Harry Potter. Um, be, ce celebrate that it's new for me. I will say though, as far as the books go, I love how they differentiate from the films. Because yeah. if you just watch the films and they say, "Oh, well, I don't need to read the book. I saw the movie." It's, yes, you do. It's yeah. See, book. I'm I'm really. But the book is to... very different from the movie, and I wish it was a little closer to the movie. Because like some of the uh, names are like opposite, and I'm like, no, that one goes to this person. But well, man, well I mean, how many? Plots and characters and, and, and storylines and sub story side stories get dropped from the books that I haven't I have no idea what's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean I'm, I'm really excited to finally be on the Harry Potter journey. Everyone... I still want to finish the uh, Kingdom Keepers. I'm on book two, but I'm yeah. gonna have to completely reread it. I think I was on book three. I can't remember what chapter I was on. I'd probably have to start over, too. You were on book two because we finished them together. You know what? I'll take it. I, I love doing that, though. Um, I'll, I'll leave the book around two or three. And then, oh, no, I got to come back and read them all over again to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's funny because we're talking about the book is always better than the movie. Um, I, I almost always agree to this rule. Except for this one, Potter. no. Except for this one thing, where I read the books because of the TV show, and I quit about ten books in because the TV show improved upon the source material and was actually better than the books. And I, I shared it with you guys because I wanted Benny to see it. It was uh, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. It's the Franny Fisher 
murder mysteries and they take place in the 20s and she's a lady detective oh. uh, and it's just a uh, this show is so fun and then I went back and read the books and was like well this is really boring um, and the changes they made to screen were way better like in the books Franny's in her 20s in, in the show she's in her 50s and so it's way more believable and there's just uh, they shaved down what they needed to but Loved loved the series. Got ten books in and quit. That almost sounds like murder. She wrote. I love Angela Lansbury. Who does it? And her show was absolutely amazing. And I have yet to read her books, but I want to. Angela Lansbury for me is just like Betty White. They better live to be like a thousand yeah. years old. It's a disappointment. You know it lives forever. It worked for Methuselah. <laughs> so what I'm listening to this week, guys, you know I love my Doctor Who more than anything else in the world. And um, I'm a, a big Finnish subscriber, and they are a company. You've heard me talk about them. They're a company that makes full cast audio dramas. And one of the licenses they have is Doctor Who. And so when characters leave the TV show, they take a little break and they join Big Finish and they, you get a whole new season set in between stories and you just get so much more. And quit laughing at me. I'm a dork. I don't care. I'm not laughing at you. Okay. But so long story short, after 16 years away, Christopher Eccleston, who played the Ninth Doctor in 2005, is back. And I got to hear him back in the part after all this time. I loved it. Um, it's called Ravagers. You can find it on bigfinish.com. Oh my God, he's back. I've listened to it twice now. That's six hours plus two hours of bonus features. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so happy. I just, and my, I've got David Tennant Vitals coming where he's the 10th Doctor. It's a whole new story for him. Um, yay. Yay, I get so much geekness this week. I'm so happy. There's like 10 or 12 different book series that are on my bucket list to either read all the way through or reread. And so far, I'm 12 series behind because <laughs> with me working 38 plus hours a week, I don't have time. And when I do have time, I'm probably sleeping. I'm too tired. <laughs> I definitely want to finish the Kingdom Keepers because there's also the three mm -hmm. books after that series ends. The Return, uh -huh. the other, the other three, and then I want to read the. Uh, and then the other ones I'm actually the, curious the what about. What if books? And then I'm also curious about because we saw the movies. Is the Percy Jackson? I've books. read those. They're really, really good. No, they're really good. There's like three or four books to it, and they're yeah. really good. The movies, I have to say, were pretty decent. I mean, there's like some corny moments in them. They're not like top-notch, mm -hmm. like blockbuster cinema, but I mean, the storyline was pretty decent. And I want to read the uh, Aragon series. Hmm. It's Which one was that? Uh, Aragon is a dragon. Okay, I was about to ask, you read The Mists of Avalon, right? <sighs> I recognize the title... It's, it's the Arthurian legend, but told from Guinevere's point of view. Okay. You would love it. The only Arthur book that I've ever read is Le Mort de Arthur. And because there's a lot of... Uh, it's, it's written or at least translated from Latin. I don't remember how that works, but it's kind of hard to read. So you really have to understand who Arthur was in order to get through the book. Right. Because if you have a hard time reading big, complicated words, then it's a hard read. Watch Sword in the Stone. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> I want to take it back to Disney before we lose people. <laughs> They're like, well, listen to these book nerds and nerds of general talk. Um, so I have one more thing I'm listening to, and I have, and it, it sparked an idea in me. And so on iTunes, I picked up the Hunchback on the, the Broadway version of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, we have to review this one because 
I had to turn it off after a few songs and went, ooh, feelings. I don't like that. Let's shut those back down and come to those to a later date. Um, but it, it gave me the idea because it, I remember how great it was at MGM Studios. And this new Broadway version that, that not new, but it, it adds so much to the story as you should. Uh -huh. It changes things the right way. Let's be honest. Beauty and the Beast at Hollywood Studios is at this point janky it is um it's gotta go it does not look good it has not aged well it's the same show literally 30 years later why not just why not bring a small version of this broadway show to the studios and make a dinner show in the same space yeah i would pay money to go to that the, the theater, mm -hmm. sit down, have have dinner, and watch a forty five minute version of this show. You could easily get forty fifty bucks out of me for that. Yeah, yeah, that was the one thing that I really appreciated at <laughs> Disney California Adventure was when they have the Hyperion Theater with Aladdin. It was a a translucent moment where it's like you technically feel like you're out of the parks, and it's like. Just that show alone, you could pay for a park ticket for that same amount of price yeah. in New York on Broadway. Is that the one that had the genie making jokes? Yes. He yeah, that's the one I want to He He made see. a lot of ad lib. Hey, this is like hugging a cactus. <laughs> crickets, crickets, <laughs> crickets. I do wish that show would actually come back. I, I did enjoy Frozen. I did see Frozen at the Hyperion. It was a great show, but for some reason, I don't know, I just resonated with Aladdin more. I, I don't know. It's I think Frozen's great, but between the two, I'll go see Aladdin. Yeah. And I like Frozen. I really do think it's a great movie. Oh, I, I want to see Moana on Broadway. That I would pay yeah. Buko bucks for. <sighs> Honestly, I'm... I'm of the mind, um, you know, when things like Shrek and Elf are musicals on Broadway, like, I, I'm kind of tired of the movie being turned into a musical and not the other way around. It used to be we had great musicals that were turned into movies so everyone could see them. Um, if I'm going to Broadway, man, I want to see something original like Chicago or honestly, like Sweetie Todd. I want to see something... It's gonna blow my mind. Yeah. I I I loved, I loved Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. I saw it three times. I've seen Lion King, but theater's supposed to be different. I, that's just my thought. I I think the Disney Broadway is great, but what happened to Broadway being edgy and cool? All right, that's a whole different story. I, mean, I just think Moana has such great music that hits you right in the feels that the music alone could be turned into. Well, and I think what started with that type of Broadway. genre is taking the movie into a Broadway show is because literally when Beauty and the Beast first premiered and you were watching this on screen, it literally hit people to say, wow, it's almost like we're practically watching a Broadway show. Yeah. And that was the first time it's ever done anything like that as far as with an animated film. Right. Well, I mean, you had Broadway guys doing the songs, and oh my god, it's Saturday morning, and I just brain farted. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Wait, did you forget their names? I did forget their names. <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're talking about. What do you want to talk about today? I'm just, I'm, I'm embarrassed, and we're moving on. No, no, you're... So what do you want to talk about today? Uh... Well, let's talk about Alan Menken and Howard Ashman now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we can talk about our upcoming trip. Since I did the trip budget, we can now, I can now start packing our bags. How many days do you guys have till you go? Uh, um, we leave June 25th. So, so you guys, ten days. So, a month and 10 days. Yeah, a month, 10 days. So you guys are ditching the dining plan this time and you guys never do that. Well, and we didn't have the dining plan our last trip either. Ah, and George, because, you used to well, swear by it. We did. Yeah, we and, did. And here's the thing. It's to the situation because Disney right now does not have any dining plan options. 
So it's, we were forced into a position where it's like, okay, we have to do this on our own. And after doing so, it, I, and I know people will still get the dining plan, but after doing the, the calculations, mm -hmm. we're you saving save almost a thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, um, maybe even more, depending really, on if you get the deluxe dining. Really what it started off as, we were curious to know how much we were actually spending on vacation. So since we're going to visit my parents, and then we have, on top of the six days that we spend with them, another 14 in Disney World, uh, we literally have it down to spending $50 a person per day. That is really smart. Um, and that's just going by, okay, what rest? Because we started off with a plan. Well, let me ask, how much How much was the plan for you? For everything? Yeah, I mean, how much How much was the dining plan for you guys when you used it? Oh, how much oh. was the dining? Well, here's the thing. When I would book the packages, they were decently priced. So for like the three of us for just to say six nights, seven day stay, mm -hmm. uh, with my annual pass and their tickets. Uh, about not not conning my annual pass, sorry, because I already had my annual pass, but conning their tickets. It was about, I'd say like 20, when well, no, I was gonna say like 26, 20, no, 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 no. About like 18, 1900 for like a week. And then when we would add the dining plan, it would bring it almost to 3000. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Because and we're thinking at the time, hey, we're getting a deal because we can eat when we want. And and we eat a lot on vacation. Yeah. Because as long as I've known you guys, you would swear by it. Yeah. Yeah. We and were. We were on the, the Disney dining plan train. Last year, George and birthday. I, for my birthday, we went for like a week. It was almost 10 days that we were gone. Mm -hmm. And we didn't bring Josh because he had school. Well, as we've been finding out recently, Disney's more fun without kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was mad at us. Um, he ain't paying for it. So I made that whole trip budget. We planned out where we wanted to go. And we're going, wow, we spent almost next to nothing. Yeah. And so when you do the math for three people, for 24 day vacation. Again, this is also including souvenirs and shopping with my mother. $50 a person per day, which is way less than the dining plan ever has been. Wow. I, I Do you see an end? Do you, do you see people ditching the dining plan? If they follow our plan, yes. I think now that since Disney temporarily removed the dining plan and mm -hmm. people have to now rely on their own instincts to say what we can afford, what we're actually going to sit down and eat, I think once it comes back, I think that they're probably going to either tweak it a little bit so it can be adjustable to families or if people are just saying, you know what, we're just so used to without having it, you know, you might as well should just get rid of it because with everything, you know, that people are saying, oh, we want the shows to come back. We want uh, the entertainment to come back. You know, we want, you know, all the cast members to come back, but you really very scarce. You don't really hear people saying, I miss the dining plan. Right. Well, and we had also taken into account while I was doing this budget, if George and I wanted a cocktail. I mean, this is literally including souvenirs, food, snacks, drinks, shopping, what have you. It's everything. That is really smart. I think we need to do an entire episode dedicated to just this planning. Because I think yeah, people would yeah. really love to hear about this. We can literally, we can break it down. Yeah. And not to mention, if you have children that are... Uh, that need to be on a schedule. Mm -hmm. This shows them where to go next, what's coming next. And I think that's the common misconception that I think parents have when they're booking a Disney vacation, that if they have two or three children, they're saying, okay, you know what? We'd rather not deal with the stress of, you know, let's just get the dining plan and mm -hmm. just be done with it. But in the long run, you could be losing money mm -hmm. because how many times can your kids really go to sit down and eat a full meal? 
Right. And let me ask you this too. Um, does kid do, do kids knowing a schedule and having a schedule at Disney, how does that help them? I think as far as like with, with our son, especially with his conditions, because uh, passengers is, if you don't know that our son has, um, learning difficulties uh, he has uh, physical learning disabilities comprehension disabilities mm -hmm. so for he him is it actually helps better for ADHD him ADHD and autistic it it helps better with him because if he actually knows what we're doing next then he doesn't get overwhelmed does it because give him like does it give him a feeling of like a sense of control in the trip yeah. yes. Yes. yes yes so with him he's fine one second and you turn around and he has tears in his eyes so this allows him to tell us hey i need a break i want a snack i want to take a nap let's go back to our hotel and just rest go or to go to the pool uh, this allows him to tell us what he needs what he wants without having because he doesn't throw tantrums uh he He'll implodes just implode. he shuts yeah. down he's mm. very quiet about it and because he gets embarrassed when he cries so sure. if we were to go to the park and have no type of schedule whatsoever and we say okay josh what do you want to do he'll literally just stand mm -hmm. there and say i like, well, I, I don't know what... you can't he's not a child that can have too many choices you give him okay do you want choice a or choice b you can't give him choice a b c all the way through z he okay. gets overwhelmed you give him two choices okay we can go here and and how when you say he implodes he shuts down how do you get him out of that at the parks i mean what do you um, do in that situation typically we will pull him off to the side tell him it's perfectly fine to feel the way that you want to feel but you need to use your words we need to know what you need so that we can help you because if you don't voice it we don't know what's going on so and then that's usually enough to snap him out he'll take a breath and then okay i'm just really tired or i'm hot or and you could tell by the look on his face and a lot of times he doesn't say anything because he feels that he's disappointing us. Uh huh. Or Aww. that he's inconveniencing us. And he'll tell you, well, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to disturb you. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't we were having so day. much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be a problem. Right. That's, and he'll tell you that. Aw. So he would rather make himself miserable than to tell us what he needs. Um, and we've already started telling him for the last several weeks, okay, if you get uh -huh. hot, you tell us. If you need a rest, they have walls and benches everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can just lay, or we can find shade, we can get you inside. Um, because with his conditions, one of the things that we have found out, his body does not regulate temperature properly. So oh, wow. when he's cold, he's really cold. When he's hot, he He's will, extremely he hot. He will sweat. His face turns red. It, mm -hmm. It's not like a little bit over the other. Anything it's, over 75 degrees, and we typically have to take him into a bathroom, strip his shirt off, soak it in water, and put it back on him. Oh, wow. So kind of going back to one of our older um, GCT uh, conversations, way like when we first started, of like, you know, no know your children especially if you're going in months that have extreme heat or what have you or you know a rainy season you know we already kind of have everything set up where we're having um neck fans mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i i've taken those to disney world you've seen me um the ones you put on your neck and you've got a fan on either end those yeah. make all the difference in the world so we each have one of those and then that's what we forgot we have to get uh, Josh a camelback backpack um, for water. And what we do with that is instead of filling it with water, we fill it with ice. Does it ever feel sometimes like when we're planning our Disney trips, 
we're like old timey adventurers planning to go to Africa or or somewhere yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah. somewhere lost. We need the Exotic. pith helmets yeah, yeah. and yeah, the the trunks and you know elephants to guide us around. Yeah, it feels like we're going to like South America or something. Yeah, like an exotic. It's like something out of an old Agatha Christie novel where the family's gone gone to Egypt for, for three months and then they're going to go over here for three months. <laughs> yeah. That's how it, it always is. So It's a process. Because I have always gone as an adult and now I'm finding myself as, as an uncle of, of two little kids. Now I'm beginning to go with tiny humans and suddenly it's a very different experience and so I have lots and lots of questions. Mm -hmm. Especially was layers with me because I started out as a child, gone to Disney. Really, Saw you started out as a yeah, child. I started off as a child. You believe that? Wow. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that I was, I, I was, I was, I started out a grumpy old man, but you know, yeah. this is me. It's like I didn't have that Benjamin Button syndrome. You know, like I actually started out as a child first, but it was like going to Disney as a child. I saw it as a child's point of view. Then, as an adult, I got to see it as an adult, but solo, because I would do many, many- You're not stand. You know, and then, and then as going from there as a father and husband, mm -hmm. it is completely different layers of how you experience the theme parks. Yeah, because the, the, the beauty of being an uncle is, yes, there is still responsibility when we go, but I get to be the fun one. I get to be the spoiler of children. I get to, uh, I, get, I get to be the whatever you want, uh, whatever you want to do, we're going to make it happen. Um, but all this responsibility stuff is new to me, so I, I need to help with it. I'm uh, absolutely, yeah. Now, have they ever been to the Disney parks? Yeah, I've been, I've been with with my my oldest nephew once. Um, you know, pandemic back since. Um. And it was an entirely different experience. I had learned things. I had gained new respect for parents on this one trip. I had no idea that when you get a stroller out of out of a car, uh, it takes so long to assemble that once you've parked on Mickey and Friends um, and gotten that stroller out, by the time it's assembled and you're ready to go, you are the last person in that in that area. Everybody has parked, come and gone in the parks, and you're still trying to get the stroller together. That's why that's one of those things that you want to keep in mind when you go on a Disney vacation, it pays to rent the stroller. I, you know what? I learned what the umbrella stroller is recently. I'm very proud of myself because I'm going to be using those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I mean, I'm, I am looking forward to being Uncle Disney and, and getting to, to show the kids all the cool stuff. Yeah, I think it's it's very satisfying, especially after Josh's first mm -hmm. trip, and actually get to do what my mom did for me as a child. Yeah. So the, the roles are reversed. And Josh has been going to Disney since he was four, and since his first trip, he's hooked. That's all he wants to I do. Get, I get to be like Doctor Who, the magic man who makes magic stuff happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, we love Disney too because, you know, when we're not on vacation, we're mom and dad and they're yeah. schools. But when you're on vacation, we can be fun and there's still s some rules, of course. So you heard it here, folks. Present. They're not we get fun. To relax. You heard it here, folks. They admit it. They're not. They're no fun. <laughs> they're sticks in the mud. We're we run a fairly tight ship. You heard it here, folks. They're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just kid, I love you guys. Oh, we love you too. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch so we don't um, use a lot of time here. Guys, I have to ask you because Corella, I'm a dog person. Corella Deville is a character I have never given two monkeys about. Um It's not a character that's ever interested me until now. I am so excited for Cruella. I cannot wait to see this movie. Everything about it is is just appealing to me. Yeah, it's it's one of those movies right now 
that it doesn't have that typical cookie cutter Disney. Oh, dude, it's a revenge story. And I love me a good revenge story. I mean, I can watch Kill Bill all day long, all day strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm interested to really see her backstory <clears throat> because you start to see in the previews the relationship between Corella and her boss. Yeah. So oh. it's like, what is like, what? is like the tension that gets her like i wouldn't even know the backstory to her boss i i cannot wait to see this person just become a nihilist anarchist um punk rocker in the 70s um with, with, there's something so vivian westwood sex pistols about the whole thing i'm you guys know i love punk it's it's music that speaks truth to power it's uh it's a whole thing for another day. What are you guys doing? You're so distracted, bastards. You can't see what they're doing. I'm trying to say something smart and, and like heckle and jekyll over here. We were uh, trying to parent while. Okay. I was just, I'm just have to give you guys a hard time. But yeah, everything about parenting and fun recordings. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for this movie and a character that I've never cared about before um especially because it actually took me some time after going to see uh maleficent um in theaters that uh, after i saw it i was thinking that was a little bit disappointing um, because at first i didn't understand the concept of where they were going after i got the main plot line then i ended up enjoying that I movie. saw the preview for Maleficent. I wasn't impressed. I watched the movie. I figured it out, and I was uh, um, that was just time I couldn't get back. Yeah. So, so you didn't Maleficent? Yeah, I watched it on a plane. It was like there's other things to watch. Why am I still watching this? Yeah, I just I'm nervous for this. Cruella DeVille, uh, just because I love the other two live action 101 Dalmatians so much. Yeah. That I want that main character. I Forgive me. I can't remember her name. Glenn Close. Glenn Close. Thank yeah. you. My and great part for the day. And those were um, fun. I mean, those were a fun retelling of the, the original animated film. I just hope it's not another. And folks, if you love the movie, I'm sorry. I'm I can't relate to you. I just don't want this Cruella Deville to turn out like the disastrous live action Mulan. Okay, um, I I to be honest, I still haven't seen Mulan, and and it's something I wanted to see. Oh, it's it's so just bad. it's just fallen down the list yeah. of, of things I need to get to. Um, it was there long, was, it was arduous, it was boring, it was... Yeah. It was I, I, I've already pre-ordered Cruella. I've already yeah, pre-ordered I, the movie. I, 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 I sent the to our magic ticket holders page, yeah. I was like, Jay, it's, it's already for pre-order, so... Yeah. But this we, is my concern, not necessarily with Cruella, the movie. And, and, I will, and I will just say real quick, because I'm having surgery the day before, um... It doesn't matter if it's a good movie or a bad movie. I'm going to be so goo goo gaga that uh, it's going to be the best movie. Yeah, I think it would fit right into your alley as but far as. But no, after. it's it's something I actually want to see. And it's a movie I'm really excited for. And but, I have... Yeah, I definitely want to see it. But it's one of those things, as I said, not just with Corella, the movie itself, it's going just the film canon that Disney has picked and decided to make. And it's the last two films that we've watched was the live action Mulan and Raya and the last dragon. And mm -hmm. with both of those movies, we ended up falling asleep. Wow. Yeah. So, I didn't enjoy either, either movie. So well, it's one of those things where I don't know if Disney is taking a different approach to try to do something different, to try to refine their niche because you don't want the same thing. You know, well, that's the thing is, I've, I, I, me, I've gotten bored with the live action remakes. Um, 
it, it's kind of done. I mean, Aladdin was fun. Beauty and the Beast was was fun, but I, I don't need to keep seeing these things remade into live action. I understand why they do it, but it's well in 101 Dalmatians. There's not a whole lot that they can do anymore if they were to do another live action, because they already have two. Well, again, and I'm a dog person. I am not into somebody who wants to kill puppies for coats. Like, there's nothing about this character that appealed to me before. Yeah. But this version, I'm on board. I uh, when I when the the first trailer dropped and I watched it and I thought, okay, this is Disney's rendition of Suicide Squad. I uh, see. I was thinking it's a bit Joker <laughs> and a bit Kill Bill. It's a revenge story. And a bit of like, uh, we're going to see this person go to the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. See, because I would be okay with the storyline of this because it's technically Corella becoming who she is. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily her already being the person that we know from the original movie. All I, I want is I want it to be better than the last couple of movies that Never Disney won. has brought out. Well, I'm of, sorry, Mulan was awful. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it this weekend. It's it honestly it was something I was excited to see and it was the first one to come out at that price point. And you know you and get honestly, busy and seeing the preview for Mulan, it really was. It 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 grasped me to pay yeah. that premium. Or not I'm sorry, my mom did. Um, but afterwards, we were kind of glad that we didn't. That we didn't spend the money because mm -hmm. I would have been very angry. That movie was just, it was awful. It is my least favorite Disney movie ever that what I've seen in my entire life. What about it made it so bad? They made Mulan almost like a ninja from a child age. It, it didn't follow who Mulan was. They didn't keep the names of the characters. Like, the characters were changed. It was very hard to follow the plot line. Um, I'll say like The this, villains weren't named the same. It, was, it, it wasn't for me. It wasn't It was memorable. very complicated. And it was very long. Very boring. And it leads you to think to yourself that that's not what happened in Mulan. <laughs> it, it was one that's of those things. That's not Mulan. It just, it just wasn't memorable to say that I could rewatch that over and over again. They made her at the beginning of the movie almost like a Charlie's Angel. Oh, that's... Okay. Does she have feathered hair and um, bell bottoms? No, but they made her almost like a ninja meets samurai. It was just really, really bad. Yeah, because really we, what made me along great was, you know, she went into it not knowing anything about what she was doing. Well, I, I, I love that story, how she just flings herself into danger yeah, the, to save the, her father. The, the, the character study in this movie, I feel, is very shortcoming. It's like mm -hmm. you, you can't relate to really any of these characters because you can't really... Yeah. They all have like a one-tone type of feel to them it's like they they don't progress of saying okay this character's like this this character's like that it's yeah. it's so like in the animated at the beginning of the movie you see that mulan is she's clumsy she's a klutz but that's yeah. what makes her special and funny here it, she already knows her self-defense she already has learned all that from a very young age she's not clumsy she's not funny she's not a klutz and what i, I heard that. What I heard about Mulan was it was um, all of the story, no, none of the fun. That's basically it. That's, it's, yeah. that, that's what sums to it. And then, uh, again, going off of like Raya and the Last Dragon, the storyline was just so hard to follow. There mm -hmm. were, I will say, in the defense of it, there were some points of it that was a bit funny. And it was yeah. cute. But... I think Disney is honestly trying too hard as trying to make these epic storylines. And it's it's the one that I'm actually looking forward to because, di again, Disney just did it so simple mm -hmm. is actually Luca. Yeah. Yeah, it, that looks, that looks like fun. Yeah. Disney's heart is in the right place, but the well, execution is poor. 
Well, they've they've gotten away from what they've always been so good at, which is, yeah. you know, we we have a, a couple who meets. There's a bad guy in the way, a bunch of songs in between. There's a battle and a happy ending, and now it's uh, we have these. Uh, how should I say this? Independent heroines who um, are the sole focus of the movie um, yeah. to the end. Raya and the Last Dragon had that sort of feel that Disney was trying to get that they did with DreamWorks's uh, How to Train. Yeah, the Dragon, but it didn't. It <laughs> didn't have that. I I have. <laughs> I went and watched The Bad Batch last night and I skipped right over Rye. I was like, uh, I'm going to go watch Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. So I hate to move this along. We've got two minutes left on the clock. I've got one more thing I'm going to throw at you guys today. And that is the servants entrance they're using at the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Have you guys seen the video? I haven't seen the video. I've where seen the you video. go through the mausoleum with the mausoleum on the side, and you go through the door down the stairs. I I think they need to throw some money at this and make this permanent. But the yeah, si- I, the silence is parenting. I I I swear, like again with with parenting, like we could be doing nothing and we won't see him for hours. But the second we do something, it's like back radar. <laughs> but um, so, like right now, he told us, "Well, I want to sit on the stairs and listen in until my electronic devices that are so important in my life charge." <laughs> because apparently, his life will go away if he's without electronics for five seconds. I get it. I I was that age once. I mean, back then, it was simple things like you know. Electricity was new, but you know. But no, seriously, um, they need to throw some money. They need to throw some money at this thing, make it permanent. Because, hey, if the stretching rooms break, you've got another way to get people in. Yeah, yeah. You can do and maintenance on this. I think it's more creative because of the story yeah. of what the haunted mansion is. To kind of have to, you know, rather than just say, you know, welcome, you know, come through the front door. It's like you have to kind of sneak your sneak your way in close. Well, that's one of the things I like better about the Florida version is you don't go through the front door is you go through the service entrance out, out back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, that's what makes is, it unique. I like how that. is No, wait, did you do Mystic Manor? I've not been to Hong Kong yet. No, not Mystic Manor. It was... What is the one... I got the two mixed up. What's the one in Paris? Phantom Manor. Yes, I've Phantom done Phantom Manor. Manor. Yeah. Phantom Manor. Phantom Manor. Do, do you actually go through the front entrance there? Or is yeah, there a, you no? go right through the front doors. It's Disneyland Paris. <sighs> it's the most awesome as Phantom. It's the most awesome as Haunted Mansion in the world. It's so cool. I love it. Well, we do. Part of our bucket list is to go to every Disneyland park in the world. Yeah. Um, starting with Paris. Uh, that's the one that I want to see first. Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm I'm slowly talking Stan, talking Stan into do this Jedi mind trick. Stan, we're going to Tokyo in 2023. We're going to Tokyo in 2023. We're going to get him on board. We're doing the 40th anniversary of Tokyo Disneyland. It's with, with God as my witness, we're doing this two years. All who want to come are welcome. The more the merrier. Passengers, you're included too. Uh, you're well, going we have our to Tokyo in two years. In 2023, so... Hey, and we are out of time. <laughs> we have talked all the way up until Ken. Uh, passengers, thanks so much for riding along, guys. Any last thoughts? No. No, I think we're good. Uh, my last thought is, the Utopia must go. <laughs> all across the world, the Utopia must go. With that, Ken, take it away. If you would like to keep the adventure going after the show, be sure to like our Facebook friends page, Grand Circle Tours Magical Ticket Holders. While you're on Facebook, like our group page, Grand Circle Tours. 
Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Grand Circle Tours Podcast, as well as on Instagram, GCT Podcast, and our YouTube channel, Grand Circle Tour. If you would like to email us, drop us a line at gctpodcast at gmail.com. T-shirts and other fun merchandise can be found at tpublic.com. Simply search Grand Circle Tour Podcast. If you enjoyed your adventure, leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Only one rule, make it good. All logos, sounds, songs, and music that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are the full ownership of the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of the Grand Circle Tour Podcast. Thank you for riding with us, and welcome home. (laughs) 